We are all aware of the fact that SpaceX is moving forward with its plans of a Starship orbital launch. Therefore, in this video, we have come up with the updates from the Starship orbital launch. So let's dive right in, guys, and find out. Also, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to never miss an update. We reported last month that SpaceX has begun construction on the Super Heavy rocket in preparation for Starship's first orbital flight. The corporation wanted to have it up in the air as soon as possible. The tower and the booster are still being built. A risky bet with the hopes of moving things along as rapidly as feasible. Now that the booster is finished, SpaceX has added to the Starship SN20 prototype a gigantic graphic that is about to, hopefully, smash all records as the world's largest and most powerful rocket. The FAA is currently conducting an environmental review of the launch and all the construction that has taken place. If all the requirements are completed, SpaceX will most likely launch SN20 on Super Heavy in the next month or two. The Raptor engines will power Super Heavy, which will have a total of 32. When it debuts, there is little doubt that it will be heard by a large number of people. Let's hope that comes to pass. When it comes to orbital flight, SpaceX's Starship serial number 20, SN20, rolled out to the company's testing site at Boca Chica, Texas, a day after the Super Heavy rocket was installed on the launch pad in preparation for an orbital flight later this year. On Wednesday, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk released three photos of a massive crane holding the launcher, which has 29 strong Raptor engines. Mechazilla will be the Starship tower that catches the enormous rocket after it has been launched. On Thursday, SN20 arrived at the launch site, its nose cone aiming squarely at the stars. The Super Heavy is the first stage of SpaceX's two-stage, totally reusable Starship system, which will transport personnel and cargo to Mars and other far-flung worlds. They finished one of the final and most difficult assembly steps on Friday morning, stacking the 150-foot-tall first-stage SN20 on top of an even bigger booster, the 230-foot-tall Super Heavy B4. Both the Starship upper stage and the Super Heavy booster, like SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket, are designed to be fully reusable in order to transport astronauts to the Moon and Mars on a regular basis. Before that can happen, Starship must first enter Earth's orbit. SpaceX has successfully launched five upper stage prototypes, SN8, SN9, SN10, SN11 and SN15 to a height of 10 kilometers, 6.3 miles. Only one of them made it out alive. Orbital flights too will most likely require multiple attempts, according to Elon Musk. This week, Musk is on site supervising Starship's final preparations. He tweeted a series of stunning photos of the super heavy booster being moved to the launch pad on Tuesday. The launch date is still up in the air. SpaceX has planned to launch in July, but it had to postpone to allow for more assembly time. Liftoff is now possible as soon as the rocket is ready on the launch pad. The 230-foot-tall 70-meter Booster 4 will soon undergo pressurization and engine tests. If Booster 4 passes the trials, the rocket will be ready to launch SN20 on a round-the-world journey. However, it is unknown whether the rocket will launch because of the US Federal Aviation Administration, which is conducting an environmental review of Starship's launch operations. The orbital flight plan calls for Booster 4 to land about 20 miles, 32 kilometers, offshore in the Gulf of Mexico a few minutes after launch. SN20 will enter orbit, complete one circuit of the Earth, and then crash down in the Pacific Ocean about 90 minutes after liftoff, near the Hawaiian island of Kauai. NASA recently chose Starship as the crewed lander for its Artemis program, which aims to land humans on the moon in the late 2020s. Starship is a fully reusable two-stage transportation system that SpaceX intends to use to transport cargo and people to the Moon, Mars, and other solar system destinations. SN20, short for serial number 20, is the most recent in a long line of prototypes. In May, for example, 
a three-engine vehicle known as SN15 flew to a maximum altitude of 6.2 miles, which is 10 kilometers, before returning to Earth safely. According to Musk, the final Starship spacecraft will have six Raptor engines, and the final Super Heavy version will likely have 32 Raptor engines. The upper stage stands 50 meters, 165 feet tall, and is also known as Starship. They were then unstacked, with the SN-20 returning to the high bay and the BN-4 remaining on the orbital launch stand. Following that, the two elements are expected to go through a series of ground tests, including static fire tests for the BN-4 booster. This will allow the final elements to be integrated at the orbital launch site, where the orbital test flight will take place. While no date has been set for this critical milestone, Musk stated on Twitter that he and his company had four major goals for the next two weeks. These include the addition of the final heat shield tiles to the orbital Starship element, thermal protection for the booster engines, ground propellant storage tanks, and a quick disconnect arm for the system. This final component is critical for the flight tests because it connects power to the fuel lines from the launch facility to the rocket prior to launch. The orbital flight test will also undoubtedly be conducted with the BN4 and SN20 prototypes. This was demonstrated by the fact that BN4 was outfitted with 29 Raptor engines, whereas the final design for the static fire test with the B3 consisted of only three. This is known as the Karman line, and it is located approximately 100 kilometers, 62 miles above sea level, and marks the boundary between Earth and space. Another clue is the manner in which grid fins were installed on the BN4, the first prototype to receive them. These are required for all SpaceX boosters to make a controlled descent and landing, indicating that the ground crews hope to retrieve it later. According to the flight plan SpaceX filed with the FCC in May, the rocket piece will separate from the Starship roughly 170 seconds into flight. The booster will next make a partial return and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 32 kilometers, 20 miles offshore. According to prior statements, the flight will most likely have a ceiling of 200 kilometers, 125 miles above sea level. If the test proceeds as planned, SpaceX will be ready to launch its first commercial flights, including a lunar flyby in 2023. This voyage, known as hashtag Dear Moon Campaign, will see a Japanese billionaire and art collector, as well as a crew of eight artists, fly around the moon. Given the recent hoopla surrounding Branson and Bezos, Musk may wish to join them on their flight. Also, courtesy of NASA Spaceflight, check out this video of the SN20 and BN4 being stacked together. So guys, that was it for today. If you've liked this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss out on a space niche update. Thank you so much for watching. We wish you a great day ahead.